Co. I'm here today with Kevin Coffey, Travel and Miss Risk Meeting Trainer. Kevin, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm glad to be here in Canada. I am. Fantastic. We're all glad to be here in Canada. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Kevin, you led an education session here today on the future of travel and meetings risk management. GBTA research shows that three in ten travel buyers could not locate their employees in the event of emergency. Any number in that category is too high. So, from your perspective, what should the top considerations be when developing a travel risk management program? Well, I, I like to speak a lot to the small to mid-sized businesses because usually the larger the business, they have a lot of these programs in place. But what we have to really embrace is technology. If we don't embrace technology today, we're missing the boat completely. And that really has to come down to the primary number one goals we have to do is know where our travelers are. And while it causes a lot of consternation, old Scott Gillespie talks about traveler friction a lot, you know, and trying to take care of those travelers, making it as easy as possible. Being able to require travelers to book through one portal to be able to track where they are, what hotels are in, is so key. And organizations really have to get over that hump to start to do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, some companies have travel risk programs in place, but they may not be fully mature yet, fully along the cycle of, of a risk program. So what are some of the key areas that you see companies lacking in when it comes to this and, and building a strong risk management program? What should companies be focusing on? So again, I'm going to focus on that small to mid, mid-sized level, right? Because that's that one that's lacking the most. Uh, and that's going to be is really taking a look at that duty of care piece and the component. And I like to start off with that is where is that even written in your travel policy? Most travel policies have to do with cost containment as far as that because it's written the old school way. So number one is trying to weave in a travel risk policy within that uh, initial travel policy to try to build that out. Number two is going to be then trying to take a look at that technology piece, trying to track where our travelers are. But third, and it's almost sometimes neck and neck with number one, is doing that traveler training. If we're not reaching out to the travelers themselves and letting them know for two things. One, this is what the company can do for you. But number two, this is what you need to do for the company. That's that duty to loyalty piece. And that's so key, but if the travelers don't know these requirements, what's being asked of them, how do we expect them to perform? But that's where the company has to step up and provide these tools for them so they know how to be better street smart and savvy when they're on the road and be able to represent the company in the best way policy so it's reducing everyone's risk. Absolutely. So who plays a big role in this? Travel management companies, I think, will play a big role with their customers in developing these programs and, and consulting on these sorts of things. Who are, who are the suppliers that are really playing a role in this and who can companies go to to help them build these things out? Well, I'm going to actually start backwards. We're going to find out what can companies do internally first because that's where I really think we have to start taking a look with our own department. So I want to, I want to take a look at our corporate security department, if an organization has one. There needs to be a very strong part partnership with corporate security so they can actually bring this content in-house and put in a round peg with a round hole. I mean, a travel manager really doesn't have that expertise in security and safety. They're, they work on cost. That's what their whole premise was being brought in. But when they partner with someone like corporate security, and if they don't have that, working with the risk department within a company, that risk manager, he or she can be a key factor in trying to get duty of care to get a more prominence of a piece within the organization. The other one is to work within the training department because the training department can take this card that you have right here and they could talk on this for one hour. A trainer can train on anything. But taking that same subject then and saying, hey, can you talk about duty of care? Now they can have some video pieces put on by the training department that really makes sense for the organization. But again, not the traveler's job. Mm -hmm. Lastly, you can take a look at that HR department to find out what they can bring to the table to see some areas that they can bring in through insurance and through other areas that they have input so they can start taking some of the weight off the shoulders of that travel manager. After that, that's when we reach out to our supplier partners, and that's key. And I'm very, very vocal about this. I believe that every travel manager should call up each one of their travel partner suppliers and ask for a dedicated duty of care conversation. And there's going to be two questions that you're going to ask of every travel partner. One is, what do you have for free or give me some advice and some products that can help me grow and, and establish and strengthen my duty of care program at little or no cost? And then what are the other programs that you have that I may have to pay for that I can bolt on, which a lot of these, these companies will have that, but I want to find out what I can grow first organically. And if we don't ask those questions, that's where some people start to stand out. 
and you'd be surprised if that can happen when you start asking for these things for free. And again, your most important asset reaching outside is your TMC, as we know they're going to bring so much of that into the, but then you go specialized into the travel risk management companies. You know, you're looking at the ISOSs and the World Awares and the Anvils and the HX Globals. These are all big players in the arena. Having them come in and having that same conversation, even though you may not be able to afford them at first, they'll still talk to you and they have some great products for free. And then I will give you the last one is the GBTA website. There is a bevy of content that's on that GBTA website. There it is. A, a ton, <laughs> but you have to be a little bit of a detective to find all of it. And I tell people this, I spoke about this in the presentation today, you have to go into that and search under different search terms. So for instance, if you type in travel security, you're gonna get a large list of, of documents gonna come up but then you change travel security to travel safety, you're gonna find different products. Hotel safety, different products. Duty of care, different products. And then I, I encourage folks to really go vertical within their, their silo. So if you're a transportation company, take a look at transportation duty of care. Take a look at rental car duty of care. And you'd be surprised what you can find internally and it doesn't cost you a penny. That's all part of the GBTA membership that we have. A wealth of resources there for yes. sure. Lastly, Kevin, so from a travel buyer's perspective, how does a travel buyer empower their road warriors to travel safer and smarter? What are some key strategies or tips you have there? Okay, so I'm gonna go right back to we talked about to those initial, uh, well actually there's a couple ways we can do this, and one is going to be that traveler briefing, and that's gonna be the onboarding process. And you're seeing some inventive companies that are really starting to do a unique way of onboarding that as soon as you create that traveler profile, you get exposed to a series of videos that walk you through all of the resources available to you as an employee of that company. And that's what we talked about before, where the, the companies need to step up to that next higher level. And it's not super difficult or nuclear science to do this. But then once they start putting these presentations together, then they need to start going a little bit more vertical. And that's where it's going into that street safe and smart presentations, trying to get them some content. And make some content that makes sense and is relevant. Let me give you one idea, one tip. So when you take a look at the passport, and everyone kind of looks at the passport, passport. and they just kind of <laughs> just look at this and they kind of go, this is just a, your average passport, we know it's important, mm -hmm. but there's a couple little key factors that every traveler should do with that. So one, if you belong to with a family unit, and you have three, four, or five people that all have their passports, putting simple things like your initials on here. So when you're trying to figure out whose who's passport at the passport counter, you don't have to open up each one to figure out what it is. But number two, a lot of travelers don't realize that the most important page of the passport is page number three, and that's going to be the part where it says personal data and emergency contact. So the biggest issue what happens with passports is they just get lost. They end up, just ended up falling out of your bag or left in an airline seat plane. So by taking information such as this, and what I do is I've actually typed up a document that tells a person that if they were to find my passport, where to call, and I have specific information on where they can email, and they can call my cell phone, they can call my wife's cell phone. And this really is gonna help them, and it even helps me if I'm unconscious if I have a medical emergency and at least instructs people what to do. But most people never fill out that page three, which is the emergency contact, so at least put some type of information inside there. I'm gonna go back and check my passport today. <laughs> that's, the, that's the type of stuff we need to be sharing with, with our travelers on the road to make them absolutely, more empowered. Absolutely, Well, Kevin, great tips, thank you. There's nothing more important than traveler safety and security. So thank you for being here with us today. It was a pleasure to have you. Once again, I'm Allison Davis here at GBTA Broadcast Studio in Toronto. Thank you for joining us.